Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 3, Episode 16, Thoughts. This episode is called Paradise Lost. Another episode I love. Spoilers throughout this video for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode, but not for anything that came out after this episode first premiered. So, let's dive right in. So, yeah, we learned that right after the death of their father, you know, Gideon and Nathaniel Malik both met uh, Daniel Whitehall and yeah um, you can understand why he chose not to meet with them before Gide uh, yeah before their before the father had died based on what he tells them Let's see and a lot of great um, Build up in this episode. Love when Hellbeast says he will soon reveal his true self, which is just so. Because, like, that sounds very threatening. You know, it does, you know, like, if he had just said, you know, my, my head's gonna change. You know, that's that wouldn't be quite as like impactful for but reveal my true self can also imply, you know, you're not gonna like what you see. So, you know. And, you know, is it like visual reveal or is it I'm going to do something that will reveal you know, so yeah, very nicely done. I like May saying, maybe I'll get to kill Grant, too. You know, that's the that's the sunny side up version of, of this scenario. And, yeah, you know, Gideon feels confident that it is Hellbeast who will kill him. And... Yeah, you know, it's it's one of those things where, you know, is he paranoid or, you know, is he right? And, yeah, um, Lincoln just, Lincoln says that the, the guy they're meeting, J.T. James, I believe it is, is like crazy town. You know, ladies come, ladies go. And... Then we have the. Um, no, I'm not going to start making Crazy Town references constantly like I did with the. Uh, uh, Netflix. Marvel. Marvel Netflix? I can never remember which order you're supposed to say those two words in. And. Then we have the. Um. um yeah, yeah. Um, Hellbeast is saying some things that. Again, very intimidating to to Gideon. And Daisy steps on a landmine, and James is like, I told you, not one more step, which just, wow. You know, you you could have emphasized the, the fact that, just, yeah. Uh, really love that they're like, you know, okay, you know, it's, you know, she uses her powers to, 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 you know, slow down the mind. She gets just, uh, you know, just barely gets clear. Let you know, it blows up. Then she uses her quake powers to to destroy a bunch of other, you know, de yeah, destroy the other minds. And you know, Lincoln zaps James because it's like, okay, you know, we we said we weren't gonna use powers because it might really you know set him off but then he set off a landmine so yeah and let's see yeah Daniel Whitehall says to the to the Malik Malik sons you know your father was not a traveler he stayed put his entire life and you know this thing of you know, look in the book Paradise Lost, hence the episode title, and yeah, the the stone that is that is a very clever thing. And I feel like I've heard of like a historical thing where someone actually did 
something somewhat similar to that. Let's see. Um, um, okay, it's not under the episodes IMDb trivia. Anyway, but but yeah, um, and and yeah, you know, that I I usually don't like the word coward, but that does kind of you know yeah he Gideon's father was willing to say you know oh we should definitely do this we should try to bring back the hell beast but he's not gonna risk getting you know getting sent there himself and yeah a another great line there's no turning back, no matter what happens. And, yeah, Hellbeast says, you know, some of you, th those of you, who, what was something about those of you who do not yet believe, you will get what you deserve, something like that. And, yeah, you know, he, he morphs his, his face into Squidward, I mean Squidhead, which... Yeah, that is legitimately a cool kind of yeah. And and that was you know, that's why Hydra uses the squid as a symbol. It's why we saw the you know, there was like a building made to look like the squid head on the other planet. So, yeah. And Lincoln offers James a crystal, which I have to admit, at first I was like, that can't be real, can it? Because, like, but ultimately he doesn't give James a crystal. Really love the fight between Gira and Melinda May. Fun fact, instead of, like, carefully planning out the... the choreography, they actually just said, let's unleash Mark Dacascus on Ming-Na Wen. I'm, ser I'm not serious. Obviously, they worked very hard on the choreography, and it really shows. They did an amazing job. Really, really cool fight. And, yeah, I've, you know, been looking forward to, because you don't hire Mac Mark Dacascus if you are not going to let him kick serious ass. So, and and yeah, very clever. You know, the you get him in this empty room. There's nothing that he can pick up, and there's also, you know, I I actually I thought that it was the the hand of Banks that he was manipulating, but it was the gun itself. Which, yeah, you know, if you the once he has the gun in his hand, and you know, yeah. I, I see how that would work with the telekinesis. And, yeah, uh, James reveals that Lincoln almost killed someone. Let's see, and, yeah, um, the, the, yeah, very cool. The the what's it called? The the artifact, the Cree artifact. And yeah, it is the kind of that like they might have eventually found that, but it's substantially easier they can get James to like get it out so they you know, cuz they are in a time crunch. And then we have the yeah, I, I really appreciate how, you know, gradually over the course of the episode, it becomes clear Hellbeast knows things that Nathan Malik and Gideon Malik knew, but nobody other than the two of them would know these things. And, yeah, you know, gradually you, you realize, yeah, it must have been that, that Nathan got sent to the, I feel like it had a name, but I keep forgetting it, but the other planet, and the, um, let's see, yeah, and, and that, you know, 
it wasn't an accident because you know really would Nathan be upset about it you know so long after if Gideon hadn't screwed him over you know because they did believe they they thought that it was right but yeah he realized the yeah and uh, let's see I feel like there was another thing right and then <clears throat> yeah Simmons explains you know the research that w where the like the evidence was destroyed um, you know was about like birds and you know Phil is like birds aren't scary and I I was really surprised that Simmons didn't you know didn't respond something like well Hitchcock sure seemed to think so or something like that what I mean famously the movies even called birds the birds you know just yeah but the um, let's see yeah they talk about you know not only can Hellbeast control these you know things he is the you know he is a parasite and you know it is gradually getting we're, we're realizing it's more and more how bad the situation is now that they've brought him back and yeah they took you know um, Fitz is does think that it was right to to kill Grant uh, Colson insists you know with this you know it's that was payback we don't do that, which it is definitely important and would be nice to see at some point for federal agencies in America to be, you know, not driven by self-interest. And, yeah, you know, once it becomes clear, you know, um, Hellbeast even invited Stephanie there and you know Gideon is like leave you leave her out of this and you know Hellbeast's like Stephanie go into the kitchen no not to make a sandwich open the fridge you know just like force yourself in there close the door it's gonna make a great comic panel seriously though uh two episodes she gets fridged I really feel like that was a waste of of a character and an actress who's yeah very talented um let's see yeah and you know Daisy tells Lincoln not to to hide things from her because that was what Grant did you know and in general it is something that this is gonna sound very stereotypical it's not true for everyone but a lot of young women the thing that bothers you know, perhaps the thing that bothers them the most, one of the worst things for their partner to do is lie to them. And, you know, yeah, she, she tells him, you know, you can't act like Mr. Perfect while hiding the ugly parts. After all, if he insists on hiding the uglies, how can they bump ugly? Something that they've both made very clear that they want to do. And I guess... They probably did in that other episode. Very cool when Gira escapes. Just, yeah, you know, manages to, to wedge open the, the door with the, the little metal thing that just, and, and you know, Fitz finds the, 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 I, I, the, the cloth part of the, you know, he's like, oh, that's not good. Just, yeah, really, really epic scene as he takes over the plane with with everyone on and you know man yeah he he stops Colson by stopping the the robot hand I was a little surprised that he then kicks him but maybe that takes less effort than because you know the thought or maybe it's like plot armor or something but you know if you can control someone's robot hand you can use that to like bash their brains in and yeah you know the 
Mayday, Mayday. I uh, disagree. I do not think this is May's day. And, yeah. Um, the episode ends with the... the with Lincoln saying, you know, this you should in engage the Secret Warriors initiative, like the Avengers initiative. So yeah, you know, they need they did need a reason for the Secret Warriors to assemble. You know, yeah, this is I'm I'm really really looking forward to. So that's there's not a huge amount left of this season, but yeah, really really looking forward to seeing them together. So, uh, MDB trivia for this episode. The opening exterior scene was filmed at 380 South San Rafael Avenue in Pasadena, California. This was the same exterior shot used as Wayne Manor in Batman 1966. Powers Booth, who plays Gideon Malik, played Reverend Jim Jones in Guyana Tragedy, The Story of Jim Jones. In disco discussing Guyer's faith in Hive, Max Snickers, wow, you've really drunk the Kool-Aid, which is how the real Reverend Jones followers were trained to commit suicide rather than be captured by drinking poisoned Kool-Aid. While this is a popular saying, it is not 100% accurate, as the actual drink mix was a combination of Flavor-Aid and Kool-Aid. I really feel what, like, Kool-Aid, well, okay, being an American company, they probably treat their employees terribly. But they didn't ask for this, you know, they weren't like, well, if you want to poison yourself, drink our, what is it, juice, whatever. Uh, the So, you know, that's, yeah. Let's see. And, let's see, right, and yeah, in 2009 to 2013, Luke Mitchell and Axel Whitehead worked together in Australian soap, Home and Away. Axel played Luke's... Uh, hmm, I don't know if that's... Just in case, I'm not going to get into... The, yeah, but yeah, that is very cool. That's right, I, I think I saw that before. Luke Mitchell is Australian. Like, he really does a great job hiding the accent. And I don't know if Axel Whitehead, who plays JT James in this episode... If they were just like, okay, there's no way he's going to be able to hide his accent. Let's just make him Australian. Or, you know, I don't know. Maybe maybe it was some other reason. Certainly Afterlife was international. You know, there, there were people from all over the world. I mean, a Wilhelm scream can be heard when Lincoln zaps James. And... The Paradise Lost Book Who Used to Hide the White Stone is the Classics Club Edition, which was part of a series of classic book titles sold by mail order in the 1950s and 1960s. And that is it for the... Right, I also, I loved the, you know, Together to the End. And, yeah, you know, the, the thing of, it looked like the, you know, earlier in the episode, Helby specifically picks up a white stone and throws in the water just to, to convey to Gideon, I know you didn't throw the real white stone into the water when, you know, and, yeah, you know, he pretended to throw the one that their father had been using into the water to, to reassure Nathaniel. And, yeah, you know, once it was too late, which, you know, yeah, the, the let's see, um, it was because, yeah, yeah, because the, the particular white stone that their father also used had a little indent on it, so when you touch it, you can feel it, you know, very touchy-feely, and, you know, Gideon made sure that he picked a, a stone before Nathaniel did. And, yeah, he made sure not to pick the one with the indent. And when Nathaniel picked up the only one that was left, he could feel the indent. And, you know, what's he going to say to the others? No, um, he's been cheating. Uh, our father was, for all these, you know, what that that's... 
for one thing, they might not believe him. For another, it might really cause serious damage to the cause that he's been raised since childhood to believe in. So, yeah. Let's see. Right, and I, I like the line, I knew it would come back to haunt me, I just didn't think it would actually come back to haunt me. Let's see. And... Then we have the... Yes, I will close the... Right, so yes, I should be able to do uh, an episode to, an episode video tomorrow. And... Yes, I will close with, you know, so yeah, Max says, you're really drinking the Kool-Aid, aren't you? Oh, this leader of yours must be a real charmer. Gaira says, we don't have leaders, we're working towards a common goal. And Mac makes the very correct point. That's what they tell you when you join a cult, but it's actually not true.